I've been studying lots about Lord Armstrong because like a couple of years ago I didn't even know Lord, who Lord Armstrong was. Lord Armstrong was, was in charge of a Vickers factory. I, I quite um, enjoy making guns. And uh, Lord Armstrong lived here. I'm from Bengal and I'm your son. came here to work for Lord Armstrong. Lord Armstrong was the first person ever to get his to get his electric light bulbs ever to work. He was a really good person because he invented lots of stuff and um, whilst I was in the factory with him, um, I got to know him better. We know many facts about him and about his life and how he helped other people. I think there's definitely a different kind of culture up here. It's much more friendly, much more down to earth than other cities. It has a real identity. They know that they're Geordies and they love to be Geordies and everything about them screams Geordie and that's really nice. It's refreshing to come to that and they definitely have a positive attitude towards their own identity, which is what I loved when I first came up here. It's good because uh, it's a good neighbourhood and uh, and there's a lot of children to play with. Well, the Past Into Future project has been a fantastic starting point for getting the children who don't have Newcastle as their identity and getting them to see Newcastle in this new light and learn more about it and understand its history. Because for a lot of them, they don't have that as their identity as such yet they don't have the family links they don't have the past and they don't have generations of people who've lived in this area the thing that i liked most about learning 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 about my area as well is because i never i never knew where i lived was actually that important to newcastle where i live now is probably probably a couple of probably a couple of miles away from um, where Lord Armstrong could have had his Vickers factory. In, the, his, Vicar, in his Vickers factory was a very popular place when, um, when it was in business. Yeah, it's changed the colour. Yeah, and it hasn't got long chimneys. And this is really it doesn't have long There's the houses. Miss, where's the bridge? Miss, there's the houses. Well, if you look at the, where that perspective's from, it's not from where Lord Armstrong, he's our hero. He's made this factory grand. We are the best of workers, the best in all the land. Um, I think he's made a big difference to West Newcastle because he helped with all the armaments and the ships and he employed lots of people to help their lives and he's made a difference now and then. Welcome back to Tyne and Weir Archive Service. And we're going to have another look at some of the documents to do with Lord Armstrong and the Benwell and Scotswood area. Now you know that Lord Armstrong made a lot of money out of selling weapons, but he also made a lot of money out of peaceful things. And he was famous for the use of hydraulics. That's water power in those days. And that's one of his earliest designs. I think he was rather kind because he because he employed his workers and then he built houses for them. Yes, the school is actually based on Armstrong Road. Um, of course, a lot of the streets in this area are named after all the very wealthy, famous men who contributed to the growth of Newcastle. They've thoroughly enjoyed the project. They've been out on lots of visits. They've just enjoyed every aspect and they really are enthusiastic and I hope that carries them over that they take that love of history with them wherever they go from this beginning. Well just the size and the style of the house 
you know, they're used to terrace towers are semi-detached, to see all these chimney pots, these windows, these beautiful large arched doorways, the wood that's used in the house. I just think they were bowled over that? by the whole, whole experience. Like the window, <coughs> or they could dance in here. I think you, though, I think you're more apt to go to the garden. I think the gardener will like you. I think you've got strong muscles for digging up the vegetables. So I think you can go there. I was impressed how big it was because I've never seen a house as big as this. I am Alice and I'm from Benwell. I, I have come to help Lord Armstrong and I'm going to help the cook to carry the vegetables. We, we asked the children to think about what would they do as a maid. So there was the cleaning, uh, there was the serving, where we had someone serve me a cup of tea. There were, uh, and then going around the bedrooms to see what the jobs that they would have to do in the bedrooms. And down even into the kitchen, some of the children uh, were allowed to go, although it's a modern kitchen, just how busy it would be to serve a big house. War factory stretches out for miles along War River Tyne. Old Armstrong built war houses, so things are mighty fine. Well, it's easy to forget how industrialised the West End of Newcastle became very early on. In fact, my great-grandfather left Ireland and came to work at Vickers Armstrong as a blacksmith striker around about 1890. So I've got a close link on a personal level. But when you look back at some of the photographs that parents and grandparents have brought in, it's easy to forget the size of the complex on the west end of Newcastle Walls at Vickers. It was huge. Uh, when you worked in Vickers, was it like, was, there, was it all machines? It was all different trades. There was painters and electricians. And, and uh, I mean, I've been trying to talk to Nathan, that's my grandson, about um, the things, these things in, in, in the past. And show, I show you places, don't I? And, um, well, it was really important to know the, the scale of the place. I mean, when I worked at Vickers Armstrongs, there was 13,000 people who worked there, which will give you an idea when, when, you, when you think of workforces now, maybe there's a couple of hundred in a, in a fact. There was, was 13,000 there, actually, when I worked there. The Armstrong gun, the hydronic rain, the great swing bridge war lad. He's given work to all of us, this young and his dad. Uh, and we'll have a look at the Armstrong number one gun, which was the first of a new type of gun that he invented. It's like a big long tube. Well, we used them to M um, for the World War and M um, other stuff as well, because they get delivered to other countries. The guns and tanks were used for the for World War One, which helped us actually win. The back end of the gun in a minute, and I'll explain to you what I mean by that. Within the primary school, you are always looking for cross-curricular links. We try to add some issues with the children that will get them thinking about things that are possibly controversial. So I'm putting some white gloves on just to protect uh, the, uh, the gun from my... Uh, it's my a good and bad because if it's good, it's one good because you decide what you'd vote for, it'd have some defence. But it's bad because... Um, Lord Armstrong might have bought, might have built weak weapons and very strong weapons, but um, if if Lord Armstrong wanted the strong weapons to go to um, the British Army, it could have went to the enemies. So that could that might have been a bad thing. Yes, they shouldn't be actually used because I don't think there should be any wars going on. And I think that for children, that's an important skill to learn, that they have their own opinions, but to have other people's points of view is very important, even if they don't agree with them. So through the past into future, they've been able to interview people and have experience of people who have Newcastle in their past. And they've really started to appreciate why Newcastle's so important, what Newcastle has to offer, and most importantly, what the past can teach us as well. So these are the questions for the main part of your article. The things that you think your readers are going to be really interested in. Okay. Job. 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 Job.
and it's really started to give the children a sense of being from Newcastle and enjoying the Newcastle points of view that they have. And I've found that the children have just taken on board now Newcastle as part of them, whereas before it was more subdued now they have it really at the forefront of their mind and that's been a lovely transformation for them to see. To go into one shop and be able to get every product that you possibly could want. But anyway, that's a sort of, th that house on Whitfield Road was where my grandmother <coughs> lived. My father's mother lived in Whitfield Road and that was just at the bottom of our street so we had great grandmas and grandmas and aunties and uncles lived everywhere so you can turn over if you want. There was one child came over when I mentioned that my father had 11 <coughs> children in his family um, and she said she had 11 in her family and how much fun that must be, you know, to have those many children in your family to support. And just talking to the children, you don't find that there's any cultural differences. And I've lived in Scotswood all my life and so do my children. They all live in Scotswood as well. They've all been um, around Scotswood all their lives as well. Do you have any kids and if, and if you do, what are their names and how old are they? Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, I have. I've got two daughters, and they are very mature young ladies. <laughs> my eldest daughter is 50, and my youngest daughter is 47. I've got... So, you know, it's up to us to make them feel that we are supporting them and, and helping them learn about our past. Up in his house in Quagsan, he went hydraulic mud, hydraulic spits, hydraulic lifts, quite a modern pad. I, I think Cragside House, for me, epitomises what it, the man was about. The kitchen. That is an amazing place, the kitchen. All the inventions that he put in, you know, the, the spit run by, uh, hydroelectricity, the lift, all that to help the servants. They had a really good life, the servants there, compared to other big houses. The children remember the vases that he took from Lady Armstrong and turned into electric lamps, you know. They, they still think about that, wow, turned that into a light, you know. The, ma the maid's job was to empty a chamber pot. The fact that, oh, that's my job, you know, they, they just couldn't believe it. Uh, and, but we were saying, in those days, that was the norm. You wouldn't think twice about doing that. That's what everybody did, if you were rich or you were poor. But the fact that also this house was a modern house, the most modern house of its time, the, the fact that they had indoor toilets as well. But of course, because his guests weren't yeah, used to that, they had the chamber yeah, pots. But I have to say, the children were just fascinated by all the aspects of the house. You know, not many children have, have been to an art gallery. So therefore, to have a man who owned his own gallery was quite something, and the fact that he had all these animal stuff by the most famous taxidermist of his time, Hancock. We looked at uh, very early on at just what was he an industrialist, was he a, a benefactor, was he an inventor, and what it came down to was that he was the greater. The greatest thing was that he was a benefactor. Name at least three things Armstrong left to do the people of Newcastle. He donated the Armstrong College, which later revolved into Newcastle University, the Swing Bridge and the ha Hancock Museum. But he well, since the start of this project, we've been learning loads about Lord Armstrong. And yesterday, we just revised lo quite a lot. So the, uh, so the answers started just coming in my head. Do it again, that was great, but at the end... We went to the Discovery Museum and we had a debate about who we... And it also has helped the children to make the jump from just learning historical facts to in historical inquiry. Our factories, fires and furnaces are seen from far and wide. Lord Armstrong um, employed thousands and thousands of people to work in the Vicar factory and that's probably one of the reasons why they call him a North East hero. Newcastle Armstrong factory Tells us all with Geordie Pride. Been enjoying it and loving it and learning without even realising the learning. Indeed, I'm proud of all you here, one really has to say. You've made this factory the best, dedication one will repay. Your terraced houses and your parks gladly I shall give. Let's make this great North Country town a finer place to live. You can't stay still 
there's always progress and I think you've got to understand that you have to build on that from the past and move forward. I do think they've got that sense that yes this area has changed from the time of Lord Armstrong and quite rightly so but we still have fragments of that that we can learn from and build on and take it forward. Uh, I think this is, should, I know it's, it's a big change to it but I think this should, should change it making a better place to live. I'd love to think that with uh, the future looking bright from a child's point of view that the West End would be able to be regenerated and become a thriving community again. Talking about the future of West Newcastle I think um, it could be drop-in places, nice trendy buildings. Well I think my future is quite nice actually. Lord Armstrong!